A gaming PC in the living room is a concept that countless companies have tried to execute in the past. Recently, Valve came out and they said that they finally have an all-encompassing solution that will take all of your games from your Steam library and bring them to the living room. Now, even though the Alienware Alpha isn't really the Steam machine that we were promised earlier on this year, it really is something that we kind of weren't expecting. Most importantly, it's a full-on Windows-based PC that comes with hardware that can definitely outpace all of the next generation consoles and plus at a compact size it even makes the Wii U look like a giant so let's get right into my review of the Alienware Alpha and see if it can actually take up some of that precious living room real estate away from the next generation consoles now one thing I'm really impressed with with the Alpha is how compact it is. Compared to the Xbox One and uh, the PlayStation 4, it's uh, completely tiny, only measuring about 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. And one of the reasons why it is so small is that Dell and Alienware have designed a completely custom internal architecture. They're using uh, both laptop technology in terms of the GPU and a standard uh, desktop uh, CPU configuration all in one PCB. So in terms of the overall compact size, it's very difficult to replicate this even if you're making your own uh, custom built uh, Steam machine or a Steam box or a living room gaming PC. Now looks can be deceiving. Uh, you do have to keep in mind that the Alienware Alpha does not come with a built-in power supply. You still have to deal with a massive brick that will definitely add to the overall kind of bulkiness and you'll have to hide uh, this power supply somewhere to uh, maintain that streamlined look that the Alpha maintains. Now in terms of the design itself, I don't think the Alpha really has any major design cues that is stand out in any uh, specific regard. It just has a kind of a boxy angular look and it's pretty neutral in terms of its overall kind of design and aesthetic look. Now in terms of the IO at the front of the Alienware Alpha we have the Alienware logo which also doubles as a LED uh, power light as well as a button for the main power and on the other side we also have a triangular LED light. Now you can change the actual color and brightness of uh, both LED lights you can try different combinations within the software. So that's kind of nice if you want to customize the look of your Alpha. I just think at the front of the Alpha, we do also have two USB 2.0 connections. And looking at the back of the Alienware Alpha, we have a plethora of connections. This is one of the best things about this console compared to a conventional gaming console where you don't have all this kind of connectivity. We have one HDMI input as well as an HDMI output. So you can feed in uh, HDMI devices within the Alpha and play it through its menu system and we'll get into that once we talk about the UI. You do also have an optical out for uh, high definition surround sound audio. You can also obviously output audio through the HDMI. We also have a full Ethernet connection as well as an AC uh, connection for your power supply and two USB 3 connections for fast data transferring. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of the Alienware Alpha, we find a little compartment, which is actually probably for the wireless uh, USB dongle for the Steam controller that hasn't actually been released yet. And most likely what happened is that uh, Dell wanted to ship the Alpha before the holiday season and uh, Valve is still developing the uh, Steam controller as of making of this video. So that's not available right now. So right now it actually comes paired with a standard Xbox 360 controller paired with a, a wireless receiver. And that works pretty well. I have no complaints about the Xbox 360 controller whatsoever, but uh, eventually I'm sure this uh, unit will be paired with the Steam controller once that controller actually comes out. Now let's talk about the specifications over here. We actually have uh, the baseline configuration of the Alpha. So it comes with a standard Core i3. You can get it upgraded to a Core i5 or a Core i7. And those are quad core uh, CPUs. We have the dual core with hyper threading enabled, and it's a pretty fast uh, overall frequency at 2.9 gigahertz. No real complaints in terms of the speed of the actual CPU. I think for ga most games out there, uh, there are certain games that uh, will uh, definitely take advantage of higher uh, core levels and, and the more threads you have, the better overall FPS scores you're gonna have. But generally speaking, the GPU is the main thing. And that's probably one of the biggest uh, problems with the configuration system of the Alpha is that all of the uh, different models that you can choose from uh, Dell 
are the same uh, graphical specification and parameters. They're all using the same GTX NVIDIA graphics card that's very similar to the GTX 860M, which is uh, typically a laptop GPU uh, that you would find in a uh, medium to high performance gaming laptop. And it is a powerful GPU. It has two gigabytes of GDDR5. And in uh, most of your uh, gaming applications, it definitely provides uh, some pretty decent performance as we'll look at in the benchmark results. But I would love to see a higher end version of the GPU because uh, there are certain games that you're not really hitting proper playable frame rates, especially if you like to crank those details up. Now, one of the cool things I really love about the Alienware Alpha is that you can uh, open the back using uh, four screws that are located at the bottom of the device and simply slide open the top and you get revealed all of the inner guts. And inside we find uh, basically uh, two large uh, fan housing systems, uh, one labeled GPU and one labeled CPU. And uh, basically these are your main cooling units for your CPU and for your GPU. And even though I think uh, the cooling system is quite adequate, in uh, most of my kind of GPU stress tests and CPU stress tests, they really maintain a uh, manageable amount of uh, temperature in most operating conditions. In fact, the GPU stress test that I did with Furmark only hit about 81 degrees, which is uh, certainly acceptable. But the biggest problem I have with the Alienware Alpha is uh, definitely the noise. Now, one of the things that they could have done to improve the noise is use a, a little bit of larger fans. Typically, larger fans can spin at a lower RPM and they can provide the same level of airflow. And they could have uh, modified the fan housing to reduce any unnecessary air turbulence, which also causes excess noise. Now, certainly the noise is not bad for a gaming PC that is uh, optimized for airflow, but compared to the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, the noise level on the fan is a little bit louder than and, uh, typical next generation consoles uh, based on that kind of fan configuration. Now you can easily remove the fans and here we see uh, heat sinks that are also easily removed and uh, we are revealed the internal architecture of the Alienware Alpha. It's pretty much using a desktop base Haswell a CPU that you can swap out yourself. Uh, as previously mentioned, we are using a laptop a GTX 860 derivative of uh, the GPU, which is completely attached to the PCB that is unmodifiable. But luckily, if you do want to also upgrade the RAM, it's pretty easy. You have two uh, slots for DDR3 laptop style memory. And at the bottom of the Alpha, we have a compartment that houses our hard drive, which is a 500 gig based on our stock configuration. This, of course, is very easily upgraded to an SSD or to a hard drive with a larger capacity. Now, essentially, the Alienware Alpha is a Windows based PC that has a skin on top of it. So when you first start up the Alpha, you get right into what they call the Alpha UI, which is basically a couch friendly interface uh, design with a controller in mind for uh, basically controlling all of the different aspects of uh, the actual console itself. Now there is a desktop mode, so you can use it as a conventional uh, gaming PC with a keyboard and mouse, and you can play obviously keyboard and mouse games with it since it has all those USB connections. But specifically, this is a machine geared towards the living rooms, so they've really optimized most things to be used with the controller. And uh, here, in the main menu, we can actually access a couple of different aspects of the Alpha in terms of settings, the uh, different HDMI settings for resolution and sound. We also have an uh, area over here where you can uh, pipe in an HDMI connection in, so you can uh, basically use the Alpha as an uh, input uh, device and uh, watch TV, or uh, what I've done is actually I've hooked up my Xbox One to the Alpha so I can actually use the Alienware Alpha to go through the Xbox One, which is kind of fun sometimes. Sometimes. And coming back to the main menu, we also do have a, a launch Steam icon. And here it will just launch Steam in big picture mode. And it's pretty much uh, what you would expect from big picture mode. You have all your games available to you to download and to manage. You have your entire Steam library. And here is the best part about the Alienware Alpha compared to a conventional Steam machine that is running uh, a Linux OS. And 
that's the fact that every Steam game that's available to you on Windows is available to you on the Alienware Alpha. So it has the full Steam library versus if it was running the Linux based um, Steam OS, it would have a limited selection only a run game specifically for Steam OS or Linux based games. And that library is growing pretty rapidly as well. But the best thing about this is if you can play uh, a game on your PC, you can play it on the Alpha. Now, here is uh, the bad part about it. It's really optimized for Steam. So if you have origin based games or games uh, free from any DRM, you pretty much have to exit out of that whole interface and uh, use a keyboard and mouse to navigate to your games on your desktop in Windows. What really needs to be done is uh, they need to create a unified system for origin games, DRM free games, and Steam games to kind of live in one area. And unfortunately, this is really a Steam centric console. So uh, eventually when that happens, the living room PC will be uh, a really uh, streamlined and versatile machine that will play all of the games that you would ever want on your PC in your living room and that'll be an exciting time. Now before you guys go nuts, uh, I know that you can launch uh, non-Steam games in Steam. I've personally had some issues with uh, launching some origin titles and some DRM free titles on Steam big picture mode. On the alpha itself, it had uh, issues uh, where it wouldn't actually launch into the game or it would go into some kind of boot loop or something like that. So I haven't had a great tremendous amount of success with cross-platform Steam games uh, on the actual Steam big picture mode, but uh, eventually I'm sure with updates that will improve. So let's go ahead and take a look at some performance benchmarks of the Alienware Alpha. We're gonna first start out with with Cinebench R15. In terms of the CPU score itself, we get about 271 points, which is not bad. It is considered to be a little bit of a lower end CPU, so that uh, score is definitely a representative of that processor. And in terms of the OpenGL test, we get about 47.8 frames per second, which is uh, certainly not bad for this category of GPU. Next, we're gonna do a synthetic benchmark. We're gonna use a Unigen's Valley benchmark, and we're gonna set everything at 1080p with high overall details. And our score for this benchmark is 42.6 average frames per second with a minimum rate of 17 frames per second and a maximum frame rate of 80 frames per second. So now let's go ahead and move on and take a look at my actual gaming benchmarks. The first game that we're gonna take a look at is Far Cry 4. It's a brand new title that is very demanding in pretty much every kind of PC you can have. We finally have games that will push our graphics cards. And in terms of 1080p at high details that we're setting, our uh, GPU settings at, we get about 33 frames per second, which is pretty uh, lackluster and uh, certainly unplayable. You're definitely gonna have to either lower down the detail settings or uh, lower down the overall resolution to a uh, lower score. So if you do wanna play Far Cry 4, it's a very demanding title and it's pretty hard uh, to pull off in the Alienware Alpha. Next, if you thought Far Cry 4 was hard, uh, try to play Dragon Age Inquisition, which is even harder, again, with the same high detail settings at 1080p, we hover around the 29 frames per second, which is again, pretty unplayable. You're gonna have to, again, lower down the detail settings or change the resolution to play Dragon Age Inquisition on the alpha. Now Battlefield 4, we're getting a little bit more of a better result at 38 frames per second. Again, a 1080p with a, a high overall details. And, and I'm sure in most circumstances, this uh, game really hovers around the 40 frames per second, which is just playable in my opinion. Uh, again, if you lower down that resolution, you'll definitely get a bump up in terms of FPS. And taking a look at Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, this is a game that's a little bit easier for our alpha to run at. Uh, we're basically getting 45 frames per second on average based on my fraps analysis. And uh, again, 1080p with high overall detail, great overall environmental and character elements. And uh, the alpha definitely shines forward compared to what we saw on the PlayStation and on the Xbox One. Now Civilization Beyond Earth is getting about 42 frames per second at 1080p high details and a game that is uh, specifically designed for keyboard and mouse. So you're gonna have to bring your keyboard and mouse into the living room if you really wanna take advantage of this strategy game. Grid 2 is uh, certainly a title that's not as demanding these days. It's, we're getting about 58 frames per second with high anti-aliasing settings and uh, 1080p with high overall details. And the latest uh, racing game that's available right now, The Crew, uh, 
is a little bit more demanding title than Grid 2. So we're getting about 48 frames per second there at 1080p with high overall details. And the game is certainly playable uh, if you do a bump down at the detail settings. But I think 48 frames per second is uh, definitely a uh, frame rate that I find is uh, certainly playable in most instances. Now the last point I'm going to mention is the overall price point of the Alpha compared to the consoles right now, which is a really interesting thing to bring up because the uh, consoles themselves are coming down in price as we go on into 2015 and into the future. The consoles are going to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and we're going to have a PC hardware that's going to get better and better and better at a lower and lower price. So that, that's a constant evolution that you'll always have to deal with. But right now at $549.99, it is a little bit on the pricey side. Now if you were to build your own PC for around that price range, you could definitely get a better performance overall. And that's exactly what I did in this video. Uh, if you can click on right there and see my results of uh, basically spending $550 on PC hardware and uh, putting it head to head against Alpha. So definitely check that out if you're interested in that. I also put out uh, videos comparing the Alpha from a graphical standpoint uh, compared to the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. So definitely check those two videos out if you haven't already. But in terms of the price point itself, at $549.99 compared to what you get at the $400 mark on the PlayStation and the Xbox, I would have to say, generally speaking, unless you have a massive Steam library and you're a hardcore PC gamer and you want a uh, little box that is very, very compact and very unobtrusive to put in your living room, I think the Alienware Alpha is definitely Definitely worth that price. But if you're already uh, a person that has a previous generation console and has a couple of games from there and is excited about certain uh, system exclusives that are going to come out, whether you're a Halo fan or perhaps an Uncharted fan, uh, you're definitely going to have to think about what uh, is best in terms of your specific needs. But overall, I would have to say, in terms of price point, it does have good value. It definitely uh, delivers everything. It's kind of promising. There are certain things that I wish uh, that it would do better in terms of its graphical performance. I wish, and really, if you were to give me an option to buy a thousand dollar gaming console that was this size and it had an upgraded graphics card, it might be definitely worth it for a lot of people out there that want to potentially uh, just use this as their full on gaming rig. And, and that could definitely have a lot of benefits if they just allowed you to upgrade the actual graphics components in there and unfortunately right now that's not the case but uh, definitely let me know what you guys think of the alpha love to hear all of your thoughts thank you so much for watching make sure to give us a thumbs up if you like the video and we'll see you later take care